G'day guys, we have got a 2006 Volkswagen Golf 1.9 litre BKC turbo diesel. It's come in for a very, very hard, long extended crank. So we've just plugged the scanner and we've pushed it in. We didn't want to give it a go of starting just to see if we can actually get the customer's complaint to happen. So first thing we've done is check for codes. And as we have right here, if you can see that, P0431 cam position sensor circuit range performance and sensor signal outside tolerance. So what we're gonna do is see if we can verify the customer's complaint. Let's try and start it. As you can see there, not starting. It wants to start, but it's not going to. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle the cam position sensor and see if we actually have a good cam position sensor or not or there's an issue with what it's reading. So, gonna get the scope hooked up, get the Pico. We're gonna back probe the signal wire, the cam position sensor, and see what we're reading. I'll get that set up and get you over to that screen. All right, so what we've done to confirm whether this cam position sensor is working is probe the signal wire, and we're gonna go over to the Pico. We've actually cranked it already, so let's go over and look at the cam signal. All right, it's a little bit, uh, signal's a little bit crap there, but as you can see, cam signal is working pretty much perfectly so it's what we'd expect to see zero to five volts so if that's reading correctly like we assume we suspect there may be a cam crank correlation issue um, and what we're going to do to confirm that is we are going to get another channel on the crank position sensor and we're going to do the cam crank correlation then we're going to open pico 6 and get the waveform library and see if we can get a known good to compare to and then go from there Guys, so we're set up on the crank sensor now. Uh, so we're going to do that camera crank correlation. Let's go over to the screen and um, we'll start that and go for it right now. All right, so I'll stop that. We'll go back and zoom in and we'll compare it to the known good from the Pico library. Okay guys, so as you can see, we've got the top scope capture is our current capture and the bottom is the known good from Pico 6. Uh, obviously we know that the waveform library is not working in Pico 7 so I sort of had to amalgamate the two and put them side by side so we can see. Um, but if we go to our top capture, so we basically got this portion of the trace here that I'm circling is this portion of the trace on the known good. So if we look at the missing tooth, let's look at where this falling edge is and we count teeth backwards. One, two, three, four, four and a half. If we go to the known good and we count backwards, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven so four and a half to seven is two and a half um, and what we can do is we can go to the next rising edge and count one two three four five six seven eight nine nine small teeth and let's go here about a half one, two, three, four, five, six. So six and a half to nine. The difference is about two and a half teeth. So that's where we are. We are two and a half teeth off on our cam timing. So what we're going to do is take off the front timing belt cover and we're going to find out whether our actual physical timing belt is off or there's an issue with the reluctor wheel. All right, guys, as you can see, the cam locking tool is in. Got the front cover off, and let's go down. Have a look, if you can see that. So the crank sprocket is off by a tooth, and obviously that doesn't correlate to the three teeth off from the cam crank correlation, but what we'll do is we'll count the crank sprocket reluctor wheel teeth and we'll confirm that three teeth equals one tooth on the crank sprocket. All right guys, so let's look at this a little bit better. 
um, one, two, three, four, that's about the halfway mark there, but if we go down here, that's actually about the three quarter mark. So let's say that's 2.75 teeth instead of the, what I said originally before, it was roughly about two and a half. So say 2.75, so I've uh, counted the teeth on the reluctor wheel and including the missing teeth, it equates to about 60 teeth. So let's do 360 divided by 60 teeth. And that equals 6 times 2.75 equals 16.5 degrees of crankshaft revolution. So now if we look at the camshaft sprocket, we're one tooth off and that has 22 teeth so 360 degrees of crankshaft rotation divided by 22 equals 16.36 degrees of crankshaft rotation so there we go, that just proves to you how accurate the scope is with a camera and crank correlation. My mechanic put this new timing belt kit on and I didn't get a chance to show you, but um, he did show me that the tensioner also was not set up properly. So other than the crank being out one tooth, the actual tensioner was not set up properly, which contributed to the slack and probably made it a little bit worse than what we thought. Uh, so anyway, uh, we put this together, put the new one in, set the tensioner up, and I think that because of all the white marks that were all over everything, I think the person that actually fitted this belt, because it actually doesn't look too old. You can clearly see all the markings still on it, but there is some something really odd that we saw. Let me see if I can show you. God knows what happened there. But we are thinking that obviously the person who fitted it didn't have the special timing tools like I showed you guys before we've got a Toledo kit that's a, a master timing tool kit for a lot of the Volkswagen Audi group cars so without that really you're never really going to be able to set this timing up properly so anyway it's all done let's jump in the car turn the key and see if we still have a long crank or not and or an engine light Okay, key on, you ready? Wowee, first go, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Let's go back out to the front. So, I've obviously kept all the leads on it and I'm going to do the cam and crank correlation again just to show you that um, it should be three teeth uh, off. Alright guys, hopefully you can see that screen. It's not great but I'll just get this to, to show you uh, and then once I get it I'll print screen and get it on my Surface Pro and explain it to you properly. So I'll go start it up, let's see what happens. Okay. I finally got the opening of a waveform and putting a comparison waveform on the same screen, done in Pico 7. So here at the top we've got scope 1 which is our original capture with the timing out and let's go count again. One, two, three, four four and a half here is our good well after replacing the timing belt we've done the cram cam crank correlation again um, and let's count backwards one two three four five six seven so if you remember we're about 2.75 teeth off on the cam and crank correlation 
and we are lined up exactly as that known good was shown to us in Pico 6 earlier on in the video. So that just proves that our fix has definitely solved this issue. So there we are guys, all done, all completely fixed. Customers are going to be very happy because they thought they were up for some very, very big repairs. Um, obviously being only one tooth off on the crank, it wasn't really noticeable because it still went very well. So that just shows you it pays to have the right tooling because without the right timing tool kit, very, very hard to get this exact. And now that it is, the customer is going to be very happy. So that's a wrap for this one, guys. Sorry it's been a while between videos, but hopefully I'll get some more out to you very soon. Thanks for watching.